the untold fairy tales of Ireland. Now when I first met Micheline, he seemed about 150 years old, skin like parchment and hair as white as snow. He sat in a little pub beside a whiskey and a pint of Guinness and I daredn't tell you the town or the name of the pub lest the weak folk get trampled beneath the hordes of tourists that would follow in my tail. Now the tale that Mick Micklean told me came with a terrible geest uh, should I ever speak a word of it to a living soul and I'd, I need never pass a river again for the fear of throwing myself in or stand near the fire lest I burst into flames. So I now place this course on you should you ever repeat aloud the tale I am about to retell. I'm not a rich man and I must say my purse was much lighter by the time the whiskey loosened his tongue. His starting words sent a chill down my spine. Have you ever seen the banshee? He asked, in a very conversational sound, tone for such a question. I'm afraid not, I replied. Ah, says he. Don't be afraid that you haven't seen her. Just pray to God for your good fortune and the luck for missing the terrible sight and the sound of it. Do you know Father Allen's house? He asked. Not waiting for an answer, he carried on. Sure, I used to do his garden for him and maybe pick a few apples for myself to collect on the way home from the pub of a night. That was, he says, and he paused, until the night that a good father died and I nearly lost, and he nearly lost his soul to the devil. Sure, hadn't he put his own soul in peril by granting absolution to the lord of the manor and him a Protestant on account of the vicar being ill? And then he had the bad sense to die before confession to the bishop. Still, he was a lovely man, God bless him. Anyways, I was set to pick up me apples and I heard a dreadful sound coming from the poor creature's house. God sure I'll not forget that night to me dying day, the wind howling and the trees thrashing around like they were trying to tear themselves from the ground and walk away and that awful screech and moan. God, that was no tree, I thought to myself. Being brave with the Guinness, I decided to check on the poor father, him having been laid low with a fever and I wandered up to the house to see if he was still awake and well. And there, in front of the candlelit window, I saw his ghost clutching his own throat with a look of terror in his eyes. Now, I knew for sure it was his ghost, for wasn't I able to see the candle in the window through the poor priest's body, and there above him, floating in the air with long black claws that beckoned him to her, was the banshee. Her eyes were like blazing coals, and a long black ragged cloak filled the yard and blacked out the sky. I tore my hanky in half and stuffed it into my ears to block that dreadful scream. I was stuck to the spot with terror and I rooted in my sack for something to aid me. The Lord be praised, sure, hadn't I in my sack amongst the apples, the horseshoe that was thrown from the bishop's horse on the day last Lent when he visited and me having always kept it on myself for a good look. To the devil which I shouted as I threw it at the banshee and she disappeared in almost an instant and the only sign of her was to chip in the wall of the house from the shoe. I fell to my knees and praised God and all the saints as I watched the poor father resume his journey towards heaven. And not a word of this have I spoken until this very night. <laughs>